Hi everyone, this is another session for OData Neo. Sam and I today are going to continue, you know, kind of wrapping up some of the last, last components that will kind of help us, you know, uh, release a, an alpha uh, uh, release of the, the first release for OData Neo, you know, where people can actually try it out and, and kind of benefit from it and see how, how beneficial it can kind of truly really implement, you know, uh, concepts like transcendence, modularization, you know, and all this kind of great stuff that we're trying to develop here. And, you know, as usual, I'm joined here with my dear friend, Sam. How are you, Sam? Very good. Very good. It's good to see you, man. This is the best thing that happens. Monday morning, first thing in the morning before anything and everything, Sam. That's great. That's a great way to start the week. What do you think about that? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, my friend. So here's Here's the deal, you know, I kind of merged in the um, expression broker that you and I worked on last time, which is great. You know, that's that's a, a huge leap, right? You know, we're basically moving really forward towards that direction, which I'm really happy about. Now it's time for us to kind of complete that circle, right? Just to give people a little bit of, you know, kind of impression of what's happening on the map. If we go back on the map here and go to OData Neo, that expression broker now is done. So what's left for us is a bunch of other, you know, kind of components, about one, two, three, four components that we're going to be working on together. And they're going to be really basic and simple kind of uh, 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 components that one of them will take the expression and flip it into a query. We'll see how that works. That'll, that's going to be an interesting one, you know. And that one, that one is a leap from where OData is today, the one that's in blue, because... Today, OData, you can't actually give OData an expression and get back a raw query, right, Sam? Like, we can't really give it a, a, a an object of an expression and get back a simple query, can we? Uh, OData client can can do that. OData client can so do that. It, uh, so OData client provide um, uh, APIs, mm -hmm. for example, uh, where, mm -hmm. select something like this, you mm -hmm. can call where select APIs on a data source, mm -hmm. and uh, the client can translate that uh, function calls into uh, order the query. Nice. And send nice. the order the query to the server. Nice, nice. We're gonna take that kind of knowledge and kind of transform it. You know, we'll think about it together, just like we did with this one, right? To find a simpler solution. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head yet without actually digging into the expression itself. But hopefully, you know, we'll get some inspiration and revelation and we'll find a quick solution that can actually simplify that process. Because again, just remember, we're building rewritable software. We're building this system so people can actually look at it and be like, yeah, I understand what this system is doing. You know, I can tell, you know, how this system works and all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, we'll put that, you know, on hold for a second mm -hmm. and then we'll go into the expression service. Let's see if we can... Um, Let's see if we can make this work, Sam. So I'm going to go into uh, uh, Visual Studio here. I'm going to create a new branch. So let me first go into the main branch, full latest. Did we merge the, the previous pull request? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So now if you look at the brokers, you have the expression right, right here. We can actually work with it. And now let's go ahead and build the uh the service so under foundation services we're gonna go and build create a new folder here i'm gonna call it expressions mm -hmm. right so this is the expression service right i'm gonna call it o expression service o expressions o expressions oh do we already have all oh we, we already did before we start yeah that's right so we have one in here i just need to include it in the project and then let's go and create an interface. So here is IO expression service, right? And this expression service, this expression service is expected, you know, to take in an O token, let's say I expression service. So this guy is going to take in an O token, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to convert that O token. I, I still want to stay true to the idea of, you know, contract purity. So if you pass in a student, you should get back a student. You know, I don't want you to pass in a chicken and get back a dinosaur. It just doesn't, 
<laughs> it just, it just it becomes a little bit uh, interesting. So here's what I'm thinking. You know, if you are on just from a design perspective, we know that this um, we know that this orchestration service is passing out a a an object called O token. This guy here is passing out something called O token. This O token is the object that comes back. You know, you pass in a raw query, it gives you back an O token. And this O token needs to go down here, right, to do some other things, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm thinking, Sam. We can easily go and say, well, you know, I need a new model, you know, to actually govern what we're doing in here. So I need something to take in a, a O token as a parameter and produces, you know, an expression and a raw O data query. So it has both both options in here. So it would look something like, let's take a look here. Uh, back to the code here. We would need kind of a model in oh. here. And this model, we can call it O expression. And this model here will basically, uh, so it's O expression oh. like this. Ah, go ahead. What's what's in expression photos? What's it? They, they exp oh, in here, that's the globals. Remember for the broker. Remember, we kept that in here, right? So let's go back here, and then let's go and say, okay, so what can I get out of this guy that can actually work for me? I can go here and say, well, I take O token as parameter. This is my O token, <laughs> but I also need to return an expression the outside world. So this is my expression. And I also need to have the uh, uh, string, uh, what do you call it? Raw O data, raw O data query, raw O query, like this, or raw query, like this. So this O expression will be the input. It will carry this O token with it, but it will also serve you back an expression. The expression in the input parameter doesn't exist. You know, you don't really have it yet, but you're taking this and you're basically working with whatever you have to kind of fill in these gaps. So if you look at our IO expression service, it would look something like uh, this thing is, is asynchronous, isn't it? Oh, it is asynchronous. Okay, that, that makes everything else asynchronous then. So it would be value task, something that takes in an O expression. And then it would say uh, generate generate O expression async with an O expression as input parameter. <coughs> Something like this. Right? Generate O expression async, and this is your expression. This is O expression. Yeah, something like that. So let's go up in here and kind of add in a concrete class, and then we're going to write some tests. O expression service. And then I'm going to go up in here and say, here is your header file. Here's my public class, public partial, public partial. IO expression service. And then I'm going to kind of add this in here. And then. Why do we mark it as a partial? A partial? Because we're going to, do you remember how we broke? services into exceptions, handling, and validations. They're oh. partial. They're partial pieces. Uh, on this topic, though, just a quick reminder. A couple months ago. Sorry for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that. 50 million years ago, right? No, I, no, no it's okay, brother. <laughs> I understand. So just, just so you know, and just for the people kind of, because if you ask a question, a lot of people also will ask the same question. You know, remember how we represent a service, we really heavily invest and leverage the partialization of classes in C Sharp so we can represent a service from different aspects and different perspectives. So one file will have the logic, some other file will have exceptions, some other file will have validation, some file will have tracing, security, rollback, all these kind of different things. You know, you don't always need all aspects of them, but the ones that are almost always permanent is exceptions, validations, and logic, always. Right, so you're saying object-oriented, 3D object. It has different angles and different 
kind of perspectives and we would present that as a partial class. There's a little bit of theory around that. There's a little bit of you know work around that. Okay. Let's let's go back to this guy. So if you look at OData Neo in here, let's go into O expression service. So we only have one dependency here, right? And that dependency is I expression broker. Right? So this expression broker. And then I'm gonna go here and say if you do control, did you know this, Sam? If you do control period, it would kind of initiate a constructor for you with all the parameters. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay. So now we're ready. We have a function in here that throws not implemented exception, right? And this function that throws not implemented exception is going to take an O expression with a certain O token in it, and it's going to return, you know, a, a fully formed expression out of this. Now, here's the fun part. We don't even have to worry about the construction of this expression because we abstracted this away behind a broker. So it doesn't really matter. We just need some expression of any kind. Right. So let's do this together. So under foundations, I can go here and say, oh, expression. Oh, hold on. Ah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So okay. the input parameter, why do we need the O expression? The O expressions. Okay. So let's see how that works. It, the O expression will be traveling from the orchestration service, the O transformation orchestration service. Okay. Oh, yeah. But now only need the O token or only need the O query. The O token query, right? The we o don't need the O expression. We don't need the O expression in the Right. Right. So uh, so there's a little... O expression. Right. If there's a little problem with that design. Like if you go into if you go into this function here, mm -hmm. if you do give me O token mm -hmm. And say return a no expression. This is a problem. Why is that? Because mm -hmm. now your service is tied up to two contracts, and it doesn't own one of them. So that causes entanglement. This becomes an entangled service, mm -hmm. right? It basically means that your service now—it's literally the definition of spaghetti code. Now your service is talking to so many different things mm -hmm. instead of staying uh, uh, isolated and pure to the contract that it's working with. You know what I mean? So this is basically the idea of, you know, the how do we like how do we ensure that our services only deal on the outside at the contract and interface level with only one contract, right? The 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 the, the argument that I had with well not argument, just a discussion that I had with with Joe was if you have an oven and you put in the, in the oven a chicken, you should expect to come from the other side a chicken. You put the chicken in the oven, it will come from the other side still a chicken, right? You can't put a a rat in the oven and expect a goat to come from the other side. You know what no. I mean? So it helps in the long term make sure, like, if you look at services that have, let me show you. If you look at services, it's like something that I call entanglement or anti-entanglement pattern where basically... People go and say, oh, give me this service, this service, and have all of these talk to different models, right? So here's service A, service B, and all of them are using that shared model across them. We want to make sure we isolate at the model level. We want to make we isolate at the, uh, uh, um, uh, at, at, at the contract level, right? So at any point in time, if O token goes away, it will not hurt the external contract of the service. You know what I mean? So anyway, it's 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 something we're trying out. We'll see how that works, right? It's a, It becomes more interesting when you're not necessarily building a massive enterprise application, more like a little library. But we could circle back on that one. Yeah, but oh, um, we have other interface. Mm -hmm. So we are in other interfaces. We have the input and output. We have a different type. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. For example, uh, the broker. Mm-hmm. Expression broker. Mm -hmm. It has a primitive type. Primitive type is okay. Primitive is okay. Primitive oh. is okay. Because it's primitive. It's a string. It's an integer, whatever, right? This primitive type is always will always be available across all your applications. But if you add in a new type in here, that becomes a big problem, right? Because now your service is literally entangled, like connected to multiple contracts. Mm -hmm. 
in other words, like let's say we went inside this um, uh, O expression one day <laughs> and we changed everything in here, your contract for your upstream services, this contract will not right? change. Yeah, so I know. Change. Okay, so in this case, it seems it's uh, input is a contact. Yes. Okay. Contract, yes. Most of time we uh, name it as a, as a the blah, 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 contacts for this API. And uh -huh. this API will do something based on this contract yes. and return something. Yes. Okay. Yes. What do you think? It's it's a it's a new idea, right? It's an idea about contract purity. Um, we did something very similar here with with other services. Like, see, you're passing a token. You're you're passing a token. You get a token, right? It doesn't matter array or list. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as it is still with the same contract. The same thing happened with projections here, right? Yeah, so, what I'm thinking is um, go back to the expression service. Yeah. So for customer, if we call this API, mm. he has to instantiate uh, all expression, mm -hmm. but Pass he, in our token. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. we will update uh, one property in this expression. Yes. Mm -hmm. The expression line, the yes. line 14. Yes. And but we let him know that we don't need this expression. Yeah. It will be updated. Yeah by this API. Yeah, and and so I have this guy that works with me at work. He's, he's very smart. His name is Michael, Michael Mendelssohn. And one of the things that he said, I wish there was a way to go and say, this is auto-filled by the service. You don't need to, to add it. <laughs> See, and this is required. Look, you can do something like this, required. Look, you can do this today. You can go and say required like this. Did you know that? Let's C sharp, uh, I think C sharp 11, something like that. Did you know that this is, you can do something like this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's very new. It's very, very new, right? The problem why I hate this is because it's adding business logic into your model. Like now your model has validation logic in it, which I don't like, right? Because how are you going to test that? And if you test it, are you actually testing your code or are you testing you know something else let, let me let me give you a, just a quick tour check this out so this is new and it's it's valid c sharp code okay required keyword c sharp this is a very new thing uh let's see required keyword behavior there it is right so uh mark is the answer did you know github now has like it's like stack overflow you could mark as answer like mm -hmm. GitHub now, GitHub now acts like Stack Overflow. You know, mm -hmm. like you know, you can mark uh, successful answers. But okay, let's go back to this. So this is say, required attribute, and then people kept talking about it a little. You wouldn't see a lot of. Yeah, I, I, I I saw a lot of example in this. Yes, yes, yes. The required members, I think. Required modifier. There it is. And then I want to see an example. Here it is, Sam. Mm. So there is a tiny problem with this. The only problem here is that this is business logic. Your model needs to stay anemic and, and pure. It's a data carrier model, right? Required makes it, it's a, it's the exact same problem I have with this. It's the exact same problem I have when you, when people add an annotation for validation back then when the MVC was popular you know, a problems like these happen, right? So I guess the bottom line here is there, there might be a point in the future where we go and say, I am okay with the idea of going and saying, hey, you need to fill this in, but this is auto-filled, auto-filled, not required, somehow, right? Today, the best thing we can do to our customer is to go and say, of course, the customer is, is never going to use this because this is all internal modeling. Like, this is us, right? But the best thing you can do to your customer is to go like this and say, this is auto-filled by the service. And even if the customer makes a mistake and fills this, it doesn't matter. We will override it anyway. 
I know. Right. Um, yeah, but in my opinion, maybe we can, um, can we do like this? We have two types. Mm -hmm. One is for the input context type. Mm -hmm. And only includes the auto token and the string uh, law query. Mm -hmm. and the output is a, a all expression result. It, it takes mm -hmm. everything. Like but two we different. Can, we can uh, discuss it later. Like two that. different contracts. Like you would basically have something just to clarify to people. Something like O expression input, input output, something like or, this. Or result, right? Mm -hmm. And the result has the expression in it. The uh, the three copy three, copy three. All, all, all three of them, right? Yeah. Okay. And this one only has. The O token query, O token law query, like this, right? Um, yeah. what do you think? What do you think by community? It's not good, okay? For no, no, <laughs> no, I'm, no, Sam, I think you're up to something. I I think this is actually very smart. I think we need to just, I think it's not too bad as long as we make sure that these contracts are exclusive to the service. Do you know what I mean? Like only the O expression service can work with this. Like only O expression service can deal with these contracts. I am okay with this idea. And that's actually a standard upgrade. I'm okay with that because you're still staying true to the meaning that you're passing in while you're passing in and out, you know, kind of contracts that are exclusive to this service, right? I'm going to need to think about it a little bit, but it's not bad. This is good. This mm -hmm. is a good idea, right? How uh, about we, we just return the expression for the API and then we delete the uh, all expression result? So, so you're basically saying just return the expression mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. This expression here is um, this expression here is not it's it's a it's a it's not a primitive type number one it's not mm. a primitive type mm. and then also if you pass in you're gonna pass in the O token right or what are you gonna pass in uh, o expression. O expression. O expression expression you're passing in O expression and you're With, returning without expression. expression in the in the type. Yeah, without expression in here, in this type here. Mm. Sorry, let, let me fix this. Yeah, uh, remove expression. Yep, yep, yep. So without this guy, if you mm. do that, then now you're you're take again. Mm. Now you're taking in one contract and returning a different contract. So it's it's a violation. It's a violation. It makes your code. It's not a win. You know, mm -hmm. if this guy is primitive, it might be okay. And maybe we can. Maybe we can include in this uh, non primitive, but native types like, you know, there's there's three there, there's three types of types from high level design architecture. You have primitive mm -hmm. and native. These two are in the same bucket. Primitive and native, the things that come out of the .NET framework, right? And the things that come in with C-sharp language, right? Mm -hmm. And you also have local. That's the models that you define. And then you have external. That's a third-party library that you're pulling in. And this third-party library is kind of giving you these types. Sometimes what we call native is really just another library. So it kind of leans into external models. I'm looking at expression this way. I'm thinking about these expressions. They are coming in with a library called system dot link system dot link dot expressions, right? Even if it's coming with the framework itself, it's not native. It's not, you know, I, I will even go the extra mile and just say this. I say there is primitive local and external and native and external are pretty much the same thing because they're just coming from an external library. I'm okay with doing something like this. But mm -hmm. this, but this here is a different model, Sam. It makes your it makes your service a little convoluted. 
mm. you know, because now your contracts are not exact. It's, it's a violation of the standard. Like you can't, you can't, again, you can't put in a chicken in an oven and get a goat. Just yeah, but way. why do we need to build uh, Owen? I, I mean, uh, API is just like a magic box. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it can take an input and out uh, uh, output a, a result to customer. Mm -hmm. The input, so here so you, you said it's Owen. So Owen takes the same thing and out the same thing. Yes. But totally different. Uh, the it's the same here, chicken, but it's cooked. Yeah, cooked. <laughs> you, you can eat, right? Uh, but yes. if we think API is a magic box, it's a function. Yes. yes. So, for example, a uh, car engine. Mm -hmm. Uh, takes oil yes and output the power yes or output the pollute for the air it yes. doesn't matter yes um we, it's a magic box it's mm -hmm. a function see mm -hmm. uh, so we are building uh we are building a magic box it's a yes. function so, so in your opinion we should uh, output the same type same type of the input to the customer we should output the same type or to your point or output a another local type another local type another local type to the service the local type here is means the type defined in the same assembly the 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 type defined in the same service namespace the same namespace yeah so you know this this example that you talked about you know going and saying oh we need a why don't you, why don't we have an O expression result? I'm okay with that. I think that's a great idea. Like I think if you go and say public class mm. O expression result, as long as this model here, Sam, is exclusive to the service. Exclusive to the service. Like the service itself is the one that's handling that. I think that's that might be okay. I think that might be okay. And I think it's kind of, in a way, it's a workaround because you're basically going and saying, I can't, there is no way for me today to express properties that I want the user. I guess, you know what, Sam, what if, what if you did this? Check this out. Mm -hmm. What if you did this? You can go here and say, here's an idea for you. You're going to like this one here. If you go into all expression and you went and said, a, a, a prop expression. Watch this expression, right? So this is expression. This is raw query, and then you do this. Ah. So now they they know that they can't they can't fill this expression. It's auto filled internally. Now the question is, how are we gonna do it? Like, how do you? Tell the service you can fill in this, but the customer can't, <laughs> because now we need to have a function inside this guy, and so it should be internal. It should be internal. Internal function in this guy yes. to let us to set the property, but the customer yeah. cannot call the API or the function yeah. to set yeah. the property. Big problem. It won't work. <laughs> it will work. I am. I am totally genuinely okay, like to your engine oil engine kind of model. Mm -hmm. I am totally okay with does the engine actually <laughs> hold on. No, this is this is actually good. This is actually a very important conversation, Sam, because it can change how hold on. Car engine input output. So you take in energy and you produce energy. The input is oil. Oil. That's oil. And the output of the motion <laughs> is a power. <laughs> it's, it's something that's completely different. Different. Tra transformative, right? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, Sam. This is why I love you, man. You're a very smart guy. Hmm. I think I think the idea of O expression and O expression result is not too bad. I think it's good. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's easy to change. So let's keep using O expression and move on based on your uh, uh, idea. Is it okay? okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. It's, actually... it's, I think it's not a big uh, block for us. I mean, it's easy it's to a, change. It's not it's a showstopper. Easy. No, it's not a showstopper. Yeah, it can uh, be easily changed. I just want to, like, in addition, here's the thing, Sam. You know, mm -hmm. one of the, the reason why pair programming sessions like these are very important is because people get to learn something new. Yes. Like today, you know about required, right? I'm so happy that I get to tell you this because <laughs> I know you I know you keep yourself up to date all the time. So it's kind of hard to kind of get to something like that. But most of the new feature in the C sharp. A um, lot. But I, I don't want to catch up. <laughs> no, I, I mean, mm. most of the time, most of scenario, we can use the new uh, features. But um, for a lot of um, existing customer or existing uh, usage so maybe mm. it's, it's not uh, uh, needed it's maybe it's not needed and you know I honestly like th there is a lot of new changes in there like see this they see this quoted text in here mm. right like there's a lot of new things yeah. that you have in here so that's amazing it's really amazing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, by the way, just, just to let you know, if you're interested, you know, you and I could have like a, a different outside of OData session or podcast to talk about the new changes in C Sharp. So you and I study it, you know, we give ourselves a motive and we kind of go and study it. But to me, from my perspective, the most important part about this is, is to be able to bake it into the work that we do, like actually use it. Like, let me ask you this, Sam. Have you used span, span before? Have you actually used it in production code? Um, not yet. Uh, me neither. Hmm. I know, I know <laughs> that, uh, I know that uh, Jasper, you know, Jasper. was or, or Casper, Jasper. He was actually, you know, he actually kept talking about that a lot. But I honestly like, I still don't see it yet. <laughs> You know what I mean? So anyway, bottom line is, let's go back to this guy mm. in here. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. So so listen, man, I, I want to really experiment with this. I want to see. Let me just think about the O expression result. I think I'll probably Ooh. play along. The O expression. I'll probably play along, Sam. Yeah, okay? I will give you. <laughs> One hour to day later. Yes. Think about it. We'll think about it, and I'll even call you. I might call you later today and ask you a few questions because this, this whole, um, this whole whole oil in engine, and then comes out from the other side as motion yeah. and energy. Let's say energy. Mm. I need to think about because this is philosophical example. Like to me, you put the chicken. If I know how to spell it, you put the chicken oven, comes out chicken. Fuck. This is good. Like this here is is a new idea, right? No, but the, the chicken um, is different between uh, before and after. Oh, chicken. Yes. yes. This is why this is why I like the idea of you going and saying, you know, expression O expression. Put it into funk, and result in O expression result i think that's okay as long as the contract is exclusive but it might make things a little bit interesting in terms of learning the function and simplicity and all that something i call pure contract right whatever you pass in needs to come out i'll think about it i might come back to you tomorrow and say hey the oil that's coming in is still energy <laughs> right <laughs> And the engine output is oil again. And the output is 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 a transformed energy. It's still energy, but it's transformed energy. I could argue this way. Mm. I never heard anyone say, to be honest with you, let's see this. Is is car oil considered energy? I don't know if it is. Does oil come under energy? Petroleum or crude oil is a fossil fuel and non-renewable aha 
Aha, yes, Sam, yes, Sam. Oil is energy. <laughs> or a source of energy, rather. So it is energy transformed. A different kind of energy. energy. But a different kind, yeah. Oil and natural gas are major industries in energy markets and play influential role in the global economy. Classified by two system, one system determined the oil <laughs> rating. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. You know, you'd think we're going to be talking about Odata, but now we're talking about oil and fossil fuel and all kinds of different, you know, approaches. Anyway, un until I just make a quick decision about it, you know, because I need to kind of, you know, I, I need to go talk to a bunch of people, talk to the community, talk to Sam, you know, circle back with Sam again until we figure it out. Let's do it this way, and then next session, I'll give you an answer on this. What do you cool. think? Yeah. Cool. Okay. It's, so this uh, is like, uh -huh. go ahead. It's good. It's good. Okay. okay. This is good, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go back here. Yeah. How long is this guy? This guy is about 82. Let's see if we can just kind of at least get a failing test, right? A failing test would be a good start. This O expression, here's a new class. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, this is O expression service tests. Mm. And here is your model and then public partial class. Here's a mock, private, read only, mock. Did we use mock here yet? Yep, I expression broker, right? So we're, we're mocking this broker, expression mm -hmm. broker mock. Right, and then yep. I, I want to initialize my service. So private read only, I O expression service. It's my O expression service in here. And then here's a CTOR, this dot expression broker mock equal new mock. There you go. And then I want to go and say uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, uh, this dot O expression service equal new O expression expression service with uh, expression broker is the expression broker mock that object so we're basically injecting the dependency yes so far so good right no problem there right no problem okay. let's see if we can write a failing test in 10 minutes <laughs> so here's here's another 10 file. minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes. I, I think I can do it do you think I can do it I think I can I do think it you, you, you can finish the 10 sentence <laughs> it's okay, Sam. Okay, Sam. All right. So let's do this, man. We need a a test. Async task should uh, uh, should uh, process or generate O expression async. Hmm. Okay. So here's a given when then let's start from the top right what's our input our input is o expression this var input o expression equal new o expression and inside this guy there is a o token yeah there is there's the o token there is a new o token in here Right, and this O token, we can steal one from the one that we used in the probably O tokenization process. We can go and steal one like this. Yeah, I can take this one here. Let's go back here. So here's my O token. There is an O token, just like that. And clean it up a little bit same make it simpler um here we go okay so that's my o token mm -hmm. and the o token has all that good stuff okay it has all the good stuff in it and what we expect to come from the other side is an o expression of expression and that expression can be anything literally like i can go here and say a var random expression equal new expression we cannot uh, um, instantiate uh, expression because what's a what's a what's a what's an instantiable 
version of expression say it's a static method is a static class you can call the method so expression okay. dot constant yeah is it, Just is, yeah that's something like this yeah give it a uh input i thought it's nullable it doesn't care let's see value default we'll do that for now and then i want an expression so this is a random expression and what are we doing with this guy we're going to go set up our mock our expression service mock setup there's your broker mm -hmm. and then when you say generate expression async we really want that expression to have whatever we expect as an input like the generated o data input to this right yeah. So somewhere we need to go and say string expected spec ECT. Yeah, expected <laughs> query. Expected link query. We'll come back to this one. So we want this one to be the one getting passed in here. And whatever that is being passed to, it should return returns. No. We think what? Generally, the expression async takes the old expression. It's not the string. No, no, this is the broker. Oh, this is the broker? The broker. OK. We also forgot something in our contract. Mm. This guy wants the type, right? OK. Wants that type, right? So that basically means we can go here. We can say anything. We can say an object. Right? Does that mean that this guy also needs to adhere? Yes, it does here. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Okay. Okay. Let's go back here. So that's that's us setting up the broker. And it doesn't matter what this expression is because the work on that is abstracted away. It's not part, like the expression coming from the broker is not our job. We just mock it out. What we really care about is this conversion piece. So this has to work. This here has to look like this. Select, right? Equals. Dollar select equals name. It will be I, IT like this, not name, okay. right? Uh, new, right? And then IT.name. Hmm. Does it actually allow that, Sam? Do you know? It does, right? Okay. Yes. We're going to need to randomize this, by the way. So you're telling me that I can, in C Sharp Interactive, I can actually go and do this. Are you serious? Like I can go and say list string names equal new this. And then I can go and say names. Hold on. Uh, names dot select dollar sign IT. Are you serious? No, wow. you can't. It doesn't compile. So we can't do that in here. We, we wow. have to... Uh, we can just call it obj because we don't know what it is, right? It can be anything. Oh, we will uh, input the low string to the broker. Yeah. Mm, and Remember? And C sharp to compiler. Yeah. Oh, okay. Remember that link expression in here? Mm. We're taking it and we're passing it to this git script guy. So mm. this git script will go and yeah. take it, I, right? I remember it. Yeah, it's Monday morning. It's still waking up. Okay, didn't get coffee yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but as a dollar yet, we using the uh, low explain is just for the debug, and uh, it's 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 not used in the uh, uh, compiler. So if you want to using it in the compiler, C sharp compiler, we make uh, make sure the name meets the requirement. <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay, here's one for you. So now I can go here and say var expected. O expression equal new O expression like this, right? And my expected O expression will still have this. It's carrying this with it, but it has something more to it. It has a expression that is random expression, which is what's coming back from, or let's call this generated expression, generated expression. That's a better name like this. That's what we expect to come from the other side. Yeah. And then for the uh, 60 line, can we um, take, a the, take the um, 
property uh. from the uh, input pro uh, expression. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. I think that's okay, Sam. So this is input. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, actually, yeah. It's act yes, yes. I like it. I like it. I like your brain. Your brain is good. <laughs> mm. So, okay. So this is like that. So now we can go here and say, O expression, actual exp O expression equals await this dot service dot generate O expression async or object, right? And it's taken in input O expression. Yeah. The result is O expression should be equivalent to expected O expression, right? But also mm -hmm. there is more. I want to go here and say uh, uh, this dot mock, which is the broker mock, verify that this broker would generate O expression of object has only gotten the expected link query and has been called only times once. One more. If there is any other, if there is any other methods, we want to verify no other calls has happened. Okay, so now if I run this test, this test is going to fail, right? Not impl implemented. Not implemented. Test driven. It's failing test, right? Test driven. Yeah. Um, uh. So what's the usage of the raw query in the O expression? What's what? What's the usage of raw query in the oh, raw query? Yeah. We're going to need that raw query later. You know, we might either pass in this expected link query in the object, maybe, or we will have it have something, the actual O data query, mm. not the link query, but the O data query. Yeah. Anyway, my friend, mm -hmm. I was right. I was able to write a failing test in 10 minutes. So I'm going to send you this as fail. But next session, you're going to have to make it pass. Not today? Not today. We're at okay. time. Okay. I, I, I'm, I need to, I'm going to move our session a little bit so we can have a little bit more time together. Because usually my, um, my O data session comes right before stand up. Stand up is at like 9 a.m. Oh, <laughs> and and I'm like I'm like the you know I sit down with the team. I mean my team is actually kind of to be honest with you like they don't need me anymore. They know how to do everything by themselves. But I might move the time a little bit. But other than that, you know we could we could link up next time on Wednesday or maybe tomorrow if you're available, Sam, and we'll talk about it. Okay, cool. Mm. More you're busy. Uh. Tomorrow morning is a little bit busy. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday. But I, I'm okay if you are okay. Okay. I'll check From with you. eight to nine. Okay. I'll check with you then. Eight to okay. nine? Tomorrow? Eight to okay. nine. A.M. A.M. Yeah. <laughs> A.M. Okay. And so, I waiting your investigation out. Output. Yes. <laughs> Oil and energy. I think I I think you're up to something. I think your idea is great. This is why I love you, man. You're you have this you have this amazing uh, experience. Just for people watching, Sam has been in the tech industry for is it is it ten years now, Sam, or more? Ten, ten years. Yeah, that's a long time. That's a long time. That's a decade. So I learn a lot from Sam as usual. Okay. Anyway, my dear friend. I'm going to have to run, and, you know, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Pull out that code, pull the branch down, you know, and we'll play around with the answers next tomorrow maybe, okay? I and have to install the Donate 7 SDK. And, <laughs> and play, play around with required. I want you to see what it does. Play around with it a little. Of yeah. course. I know, think I have to catch up with the C Sharp 11. I'll, I'll help you. This is what I do. <laughs> like, our pairing sessions, I'm just a preacher. I'm just talking about. You know, what? what is the new stuff and the, can we actually incorporate it? This is the point of these podcasts, right? Yeah, maybe next time we can work together to play with the span of T. Yes. yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Casper was up to something, you know, maybe he was up to something. Okay. Anyway, as usual, Sam, it's really fun and pleasure talking to you, brother. And of course, for people watching us, if you like this session, never heard of required, you know, or you have any comments about the standardization of building this, or any comments at all, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Sam and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.
Bye. Thank you, Sam. <laughs>